The Dental Brief is brought to you by Omni Premier Marketing and the amazing guests who bring wisdom and advice that you can put to use to take your business and practices to the next level. Find us on Facebook and join the conversation. Get ready to grow because we are kicking off the next episode in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief. I'm so excited for today's guest. It just took a little bit of time to get this together, so I really appreciate you coming on. Eric Izaka, say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Patrick, for having me. Yep. Big name software company, Planet DDS. I know a lot of people have heard that. Not everybody knows exactly what Planet DDS does, so we'll get into that. Um, Eric, let's start off by telling me, how'd you get involved in uh, dentistry? Very um, circuitously. So I do not have a dental background, nor do I have a software background. Uh, I started off uh, studying actually engineering in college, uh, decided I didn't want to get a real job, moved to Costa Rica to teach English. Came back, wasn't able to get a real job uh, because uh, the economy was kind of not doing great in 2000. Uh, I ended up going to Spain, studying abroad, and then took a job in construction. And when I was in construction, I went to uh, I lived in Afghanistan, lived overseas, lived in Egypt, and it gave me a lot of great experience in terms of kind of running operations in a way that sure. probably, candidly, at the age of 25, I wasn't prepared to do. Went to business school and then stumbled upon um, an opportunity through uh, through uh, an investment bank to to acquire and operate what was seemingly a very interesting dental software company in a mar- that was attacking a market that was very early in terms of the DSO and enterprise space, but very attractive in terms of its growth and its need for a compelling software solution. So I always I'll always remember the first day when we bought the business and the founder's wife turned to me and she's from New York and she said, what do you know about dentistry? And I said, well, I get my teeth clean. And she goes, what do you know about software? I said, well, how do I use it? And she said, all right, well, <laughs> let's go. Yeah, um, got everything you need. Got everything you need. I'm totally qualified. So that was in 2015 and I've been, uh, I've been involved ever since. Yeah. So obviously you're solving problems, right? That's what entrepreneurs do. That's what people like you do. Dentists have plenty of problems right now. What are some problems that you're seeing out there and, and that you're helping solve? Definitely uh, outdated siloed solutions from a software perspective. So we we uh, provide cloud-based enterprise kind of level system of record facts management software and imaging. And what we, we find is that there's a lot of folks out there that are still on a lot of antiquated on-premise solutions that don't talk to each other, particularly when Groups are acquisitive and they're bringing a bunch of locations together that might be on different practice management software. Uh, it's very difficult to manage when you've got, you don't have a single patient record, you don't have a, a single database that allows you to get the insights, consolidate, centralize uh, scale and such. I think that's a big problem that hopefully we're, we're trying to solve. Um, the second one, I, I think, and this is just probably the nature of some of the demographic shif- shifts and some of patients being on average younger is that expectations are changing. Mm. Most patients, younger patients, I think, are less connected to probably their providers and are more connected to the convenience of and digital experience. And I think that's a challenge for a lot of DSOs and, and dental locations to be able to think through. Uh, it's something that you're just going to have to figure out, I think, as, as, as we move on. Um, and then I think there's just real issues with scalability in dentistry. Um, uh, there's and some of that comes to being on a single unified platform that allows you to do things like scale and grow quickly and standardize and create efficiency. Within a, within a group or within a practice. Uh, and also, I mean, right now, economically, uh, um, particularly for our segment, the DSO segment, cost of capital is high, interest rates are still relatively high. It's, it's, it's preventing, it's, it is resulting in not as much activity from an M&A perspective that, is, that traditionally drives a lot of the growth of our clients. And, and that's something we're seeing uh, right now as well. Yep, so talk about the, um, talk about Planet DDS and, and exactly what it does and how it helps. So we provide um, practice management software, imaging software uh, for both multi-specialty groups, individual practices, and orthodontic groups um, through our Denicon and Cloud9 platforms. We have an imaging solution too that captures and allows you to view images depending on independent of what kind of sensor you're using. And then we we have a patient um, engagement or patient acquisition marketing platform, which we call Legwork Practice Marketing. There's That's kind of our entire suite. Um, when you think about how we solve and the point solutions we provide. We really, we think of ourselves as the platform upon which we want uh, groups to grow. There's a lot of innovation happening within dental technology right now on the software side, whether it has to do with eligibility or whether it has to do with revenue cycle management on the back end. Like all of the solutions that these these companies are are solving, we want to be the platform that allows you to plug those into um, through APIs and such 
such that you're able to scale and grow your practice. And the, the problem that we fundamentally solve is, I think, if, if I were to synthesize it down into one thing, it's standardization. It's single platform, single patient experience, single user experience across multiple locations, which makes it so much easier to add that incremental location, incremental users, allows you to, to ensure that the patient experience is uniform and good across all of your locations. It allows you to do things like centralize. So if you wanted to centralize billing or scheduling, you could do that on a single cloud-based platform. So we're very much um, trying to fix uh, what we see as a kind of a broken uh, dentistry technology platform. It just has never been fixed and and we're, we're excited about doing it. Yeah, that's awesome. So it sounds like you've really got um, pretty much everything that people need to run their practice all bundled in one solution. It's fair to say. Yeah, I would say different <clears throat> solutions are all integrated closer together, but that's, that's the right way to think about it. Everything yep. with the exception of like maybe HR, payroll, and some of the expense side of the accounting, you can pretty much do everything else that you need to out of out of our systems. Yep. So let's kind of talk about usability a little bit and what might stop somebody from saying, hey, maybe I should look at this. Maybe I should get more digital in my practice. Maybe I need to look at evolving my practice. What are some of the types of objections that your company hears from dentists and what do you say to them? So in other words, you know, if they're like, hey, I don't want to make a switch. I'm using this right now. How do you overcome those objections uh, to help them? Which is which are many and, and I think legitimate in many cases. So switching practice management software is hard. Uh, you know, a lot of people use like the root canal or heart attack, even more morbid kind of example of what it's like to go through a transformation of the change of moving from one system to another. It's you've got to convert your data and then you've got to retrain the staff. And oftentimes the staff has been using the software for uh, 10 or 15 years. You have to, with, with the conversion of the data, there's always going to be some sort of data loss, right? Which is uncomfortable to manage through. And so, and then there's the change management of like, oh, I have to do my forms differently. I have to enter my insurance plans. So when we hear that objection, which I think is real, we, we um, speak to the fact that we have done that at scale for 15 years. So we have, we have been in the software game, implementing multi-location DSO type software for a long time and we've gotten very good at it. And so when we still think it's hard, but we we walk you through all steps of it. We, in some cases, are working hard to take more of the burden off of you and put it on ourselves, such that you know you can move seamlessly from one system to a new system. We, uh, we sit down and plan with you, like what are you trying to accomplish by doing this? Because oftentimes it's not just being on a single platform, it's standardizing workflows, it's thinking about making the patient experience uniform and, there are some choices inevitably you go through when you're switching software that you have the opportunity to do by standardizing on one single platform. And we have to be very consultative and I think it's the right thing to do. And it's part of the benefit of switching is like, well, at the end of the day, I don't know what software is going to look like on 10 locations. I know what it looks like on one location, two locations, three locations, four locations. What are the choices that I make from a configuration standpoint that allow me to really benefit from being on an enterprise solution? So those are the things I think we try to present. We've got a lot of experience doing still very hard um, and it's still, it still is disruptive, but I think we, we try to demonstrate that we've got some capability and experience too. Yep. You obviously have um, a little bit of bias, but you also have a, a lot of uh, faith in your product, right? You've worked very hard to put this together and make sure that you're uh, really helping Dennis get to the next level in their practices and beyond. So with that being said, let me ask you this question. If you're thinking about making a change in practice software, or you know you need something to do, how do you, what are the right questions to ask to make sure that you right, find the right fit for yourself? Yeah, that is a great question. And, and yeah, um, full, enormous grain of salt. I'm incredibly biased about our platform. But sure. if I were advising like my uncle, uh, for example, about buying software and saying, like, take Planet DDS out of the equation, I would... There's, there are a couple questions I would ask. I, I don't know if I necessarily ask the questions. I would go find three people that look like me in terms of like size, multi-specialty, um, desire to scale, maybe private equity sponsorship, all of the things. And, and I go talk to them about what it's like to go through the experience and what it's like on the other side of the experience. It's surprisingly hard to build a fully functional enterprise solution um, at scale in dentistry. I think we are one of the few people that do that. And it's taken us a long time, I think, to figure that out. So as I'm evaluating different options, I would I would figure out who's been in the industry for a while and done it a bunch. And then I go talk to people who've actually used it. Like you could, I can tell you, it's like, look, for, it's fully functional. It's, um, 
you know, it's great. It's awesome usability. It's, you know, it's reliable. All the things that, you know, you would do probably in a traditional sales deck. I think it's such a critical decision because it'll, it is so massively um, transformative in a lot of ways that I would actually go talk to a bunch of people. And the thing about the DSO industry too is, um, and dentistry in general, it's like, it's the largest non-healthcare or non-hospital uh, market in healthcare, but it's also in a weird way, the smallest in, in that everybody seems to know each other. Um, right, so right. Yeah. it shouldn't be super hard to go find somebody who's gone through that experience. But I, I think, I think that would be the, the best piece of advice. I yeah, that makes sense. So um, I always recommend doing a little dating before you jump into a marriage. I think that's a pretty good thing to do. If they want to do a couple of dates and learn a little bit about Planet DDS, what's the right way to do that? What's the, what's the, what do you recommend? Yeah. So I would say um, visiting, visit our website, send us an email, uh, fill out a form. We're happy to, I mean, I think we're, um, we are very, one of our core values is, is uh, we're not a core value, actually one of ours, but one of the things we really emphasize is transparency. Uh, we, we, uh, I think our sales team and sales teams of all different types of flavors are very direct and honest about what we do and what we don't do. Cause I also think it's like, it's really hard to switch. And so like, if you start overselling the capability of doing it, you're just going to end up failing in the, in the actual implementation process too. So right. I think have a sell a form, have a conversation with somebody on our team, reach out to me, reach out to anyone that you, and just have, have some of those conversations around what, what the benefits are of being on a single platform. And also, what are like what are the challenges? What what can I expect? And how do I have to think about resourcing appropriately, or preparing, or setting my own expectations about the challenges of, of moving and standardizing? I think those are good things. But website's probably the best way to find us. Um, info at planetdds.com. We're on all socials, LinkedIn. So or hit us up wherever you yeah yep. you, you find you. Yep. I certainly suggest you give them a look and check them out. Eric, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to visit with us today. So Eric Gizek, Planet DDS. Eric, again, thanks. Thanks, Patrick, for having me.